By far the best way to settle the Moonhoax debate is to resolve the artifacts with a ground-based telescope. Dr. Richard West had stated in 2002 that the Very Large Telescope in Chile had the capability to resolve the artifacts and that he would use it for just that. Ten years on, and still no luck. There have been many unmanned missions to the moon, but the only one with resolving capabilities was A, owned and operated by NASA, and B, never lived up to all the hype, and at best only added fuel to the moon hoax fire. The best the rest could come up with were landscape features which were already resolved by pre-Apollo missions anyway, or observations that later turned out to be erroneous like the mysterious halo thought to be engine bloom disturbance, but later turned out to be the sunny sides of craters. But all that seemed like it was about to change. In April 2009, the private company Astrobotic Technology unveiled plans to land an unmanned robotic rover a mile from the Apollo 11 landing site. The rover would journey to where the Eagle is said to have touched down and beam back high-definition videos. Of course, at the time, Astrobotic Technologies had the spacecraft but nothing to launch it. But in February 2011, they joined forces with SpaceX. The Falcon 9 rocket would send the lander to the lunar surface. The stage was set for the first ever 100% privately owned mission to the moon, and only a mile away from the Apollo 11 landing site too. But it wasn't to be. Beginning in October 2011, NASA officially declared that all six Apollo landing sites would be no-fly zones and that the Apollo 11 site would be restricted with a 75 meter buffer zone while Apollo 17's buffer zone will be over 200 meters wide. Purely with protecting the artifacts in mind. NASA is taking steps now to preserve the steps they took decades ago on the surface of the moon. They are protecting American landing sites on the moon for historic preservation, presumably because you never know who or what will go back there. And there are a number of missions vying to go back with unmanned craft. They just want to declare the area off limits. Because there's no air, wind or weather, Neil Armstrong's footprints will never fade and they want to make sure they and all the others will remain undisturbed. In light of this announcement, Astrobotic Technology President John Thornton announced that they would change their destination from the Apollo 11 site to the Lunar North Pole, where vast amounts of water are believed to be frozen in the permanently shadowed lunar craters. He also said his company would now try to land near one of the Soviet lunar landers, as NASA didn't say anything about those vehicles carrying no-fly zones or buffer zones, only the American landers. Back to square one, it seems. Some subscribers and I were having a discussion about this in the comments of one of my earlier videos, and I think the public opinion is unanimous. Since when does NASA own the moon? Of course, these buffer zones only apply to Apollos 11 and 17. It has been suggested by some to just land an unmanned rover near one of the other four sites, at a distance outside the no-fly zone border, and then drive to where the artifacts supposedly are. I think this is a good idea, but then again, it wouldn't surprise me if NASA just declared buffer zones for the other four sites should anyone officially unveil such a plan. And if the shootdown of USA-193 is any indication, I think it is a fair bet that NASA and the government will do everything in their power to enforce these restrictions. Perhaps these private companies should launch to the moon, telling everyone that they're targeting an approved location, and then only reveal their actual destination after the moment of touchdown. It would also be cool if the VLT, or the upcoming ELT, could observe the rover whilst on the surface to correlate with the TV pictures it transmits. Not to mention have members of the general public line up and take turns in operating the remote control television camera. Remember, no government control. I honestly don't expect the rover will find anything, but a good idea is a good idea.